In this video, we are going to cover quite a bit of REITs and today, you are going to hear about Suntech REIT. Now, Suntech REIT, in my opinion, has done pretty good in terms of its performance. The DPU, dividends per unit, has actually climbed to 4.154 cents for the first half of 2021. Then the key question is, is Suntech a buy? But of course, you need a full picture of things. That's why, in a previous tutorial I've touched before, the insiders have been buying at about $1.30 plus. And then there was still losses seen in terms of his convention center. So this tutorial links up with that previous one, which I'll leave towards the end of this video. Today, I'll be coming with you key updates. The first is how is Suntech Office Towers doing? The second is of course Suntech Mall. These two are key cornerstone assets. And last but not least, I'll be touching on Suntech's overseas assets. So if this topic interests you, continue watching on. Hi guys, welcome back. Now let's dive on to things right away. The first thing to note is Suntech Office Towers performance. Now if we pull up this chart for you to see, you realize that in terms of Singapore's office computer occupancy, Suntech City Office is now below Singapore average. ORQ and MBFC Towers look to be okay, still above average. But why is Suntech City Office doing so poorly? So if you see the second chart over here, you realize that occupancy has been declining, correct? Every quarter has been dropping bit by bit which to me is a little bit worrying. The only positive seems to be that the per square foot rent has been increasing. So occupancy drop, per square foot increase, kind of compensates for the net property income. So if you look in terms of the expiring lease, you realize that the bulk is in 2024. 2021 expiring lease does not seem to be too big, so at least that's a good point. So if we look in terms of how it fares between the various halves, I've actually collated for you the numbers already. In this table that we've done ourselves, you realize that the Suntech City office before pandemic was about contributing $50.5 million. But in the latest results, they have delivered about $48.4 million, which means a flattish kind of a performance. And if you want to look at it from a chart perspective, this is how it looks. The blue bar over here highlights what the performance for Suntech office tower is. And to me, there's another worrying factor. Just right opposite Suntech, there's a new office tower coming up, a spanking new one, which is actually done by Gorko Land. So Gorko Midtown will have some offices, if I'm not wrong, 770,000 square feet worth of grade A office space. And that's really adding to the competition because there's dual right opposite there. My office is around there, so I pass by it quite often. And this whole Gorko Midtown would be completed in phases between 2022 to 2024. So expect competition in the area. And would it mean that occupancy for Suntech would decline further? Second point, let's move on to Suntech Mall itself. You know, it's one of my favorite malls to go because it's not too crowded. And I actually like, you know, a particular bread shop over there. So Suntech Mall, right, if you see in terms of the performance, you realize that it's actually recovered quite a bit, correct? Previously 90.1% occupied and then now risen up to 93.9%. Maybe they've been dropping rent a bit. I don't know details yet, but at least the occupancy has increased. So that is good news because Suntech Mall really relies on office crowds to come back. If we all are working from home, Suntech Mall is not somewhere that is around any neighborhood. It really needs office crowd to come in. So it's also shown footfall recovery, but then a subsequent drop again after we had phase two heightened alert. But personally, I do think that mandatory work from home would sooner or later be over, which means office crops will return and then footfall will increase and then naturally they can increase rent and collect variable rent income also. So Suntech Mall itself, I have a good outlook of it, but the worrying part of course is still the convention center wise. So let me show you what we have collated as a team. And before I get there, I invite you to smash on like button because it's taken our team hours to prepare these slides for you and hopefully it's benefited you when it comes to considering whether Suntech REIT is a good investment or not. So this table shows on a graph perspective, you realize that the blue bar, which is Suntech City Mall dropped, but then recovered as of first half 2021. I think this should be on a recovery trend. The red bar over there is of course the Suntech convention. We are still not seeing, you know, uh, car conventions kind of thing coming back or baby fares coming back. And that's why the losses are still there. And if your question is, hey, how come the losses seems to have been getting wider? Uh, I think that largely is explained by the grants from government drying up so this part will still be there at least for another half, if I'm not wrong. Now let's move on to the third point, which is Suntech REIT is definitely diversifying away from Singapore and focusing more on UK and Australia. I'll give you details in a while. Singapore office REITs, from what DBS has mentioned in their research, seems to be stable because there's of course downsizing by 
banks, correct? As you can see in this chart over here. We just said Allianz, HSBC, Citigroup, Mizuho, DBS. These big names have been downsizing by big percentages. But then there's technology players coming in. WeWork, Amazon. So these office gaps have been filled up. And as of now, DBS research suggests that it's stable. It's not like, you know, the banks have downsized and then there's big gaps not filled. So not the case. So technology players have been taking up good grade A offices. Hopefully that saves the SunTech office towers performance moving forward. So if we see what they've done in terms of diversifying to Australia and UK, you realize this is a list of assets added in, correct? I'll highlight a few key findings that we have discovered. Southgate, which is in Australia, previously had 100% occupancy in terms of its office towers. And then right now you realize that it's dropped quite a bit to 95.4%. I think that could be due to guaranteed rent expiring, if I'm not wrong. If you know a thing or two, do share in the comment sections. And then I also realized that Harris, which is also in Australia, has seen occupancy being filled up a bit. All in all, it seems that the Australian offices are above the industry average when it comes to occupancy. The latest numbers uh, are coming in from UK. Nova, which is a UK acquisition, 100% occupancy still, but there's a new property, TMB, the Minister Building, which is this office over here. You realize that this office tower is also grade A, and a new purchase that could potentially increase UK's contribution. So Suntech REIT's moves have been, they actually divested some strata units in Suntech Towers itself. They've actually sold away Nine Penang, which is actually opposite Plaza Singapore, the building that UBS has a big logo over it. So they have actually sold that off. They have a 30% equity stake in that property venture and the net property yield was only about 3.3%. So that divestment actually brought Suntech REIT 66.5 million and according to CEO, that is a return of 305%. Well, I think that's pretty good in terms of recycling capital, which means less Singapore assets and then investing into TMB, the minister building in UK. So that brings on a million dollar question. Is Suntech a buy? I don't know, you have to decide for yourself, but let me pull out the chart for you to see. This is where Suntech is hovering around right now, about $1.50. And you realize that it's about 20, 30% cheaper than pre-pandemic, which is closer to 180, 190. But then you also realize that the DPU is kind of back to its heyday already. And what if convention center starts? changing from losses to profits. DPU could be bumped up slightly more. So if you enjoyed this presentation, smash the like button and also a shout out to a course that I've been creating right now. If you're looking to understand how I do research and you want some foundation when it comes to stock investing, this course is meant to give you the right basics. No promises like you can change your life or you can make five figures every month, that kind of gimmick. So if you're keen, look out for links below. And as a last one, I'd like to introduce you to this previous tutorial I've done on Suntech Read that will give you a full picture of things because it'll help you understand the picture a bit clearer and it's the video I mentioned at the start of this tutorial. So with that, I'll sign off and see you there also. Take care and goodbye.